Hi, this is David Harper of Bonic Turtle. Yesterday I illustrated the idea of the key rate compared to traditional duration for a bond. Today I'd like to calculate a key rate duration and that'll set up tomorrow's screencast which illustrates the more elaborate key rate shift technique which is relevant to an FRM candidate based on the assigned reading from Bruce Tuckman. As usual I need some assumptions. I'm going to look at a portfolio of five bonds the only difference will be their term to maturity. Bond 5 will be a 5-year bond. Bond 1 is a 1-year bond. All of the bonds have a face value of 1,000, paying an annual coupon of 5%. I'm going to keep it simple with an annual coupon as opposed to the semi-annual coupon that I usually show. And that means a $50 coupon every year. And I imagined a simple term structure of spot rate here so at one year the spot rate is 3%, at two year the spot rate is 4%, and so on for my term structure of spot rates. Here is simply the array of expected future cash flows for each bond, meaning this first bond is only a one-year bond. It will return the principal of 1,000 plus the coupon of 50 for 1,050. My two-year bond in year one will pay a coupon of 50 and then return the principal plus the coupon and so on the pattern is the same the only difference is the term to maturity in the bottom panel I've simply computed the price of each of these bonds shown in green which we know is the sum of the present values of each of the cash flows so for example if we look at bond three here it has a coupon, a coupon, and then the present value of the future cash flow, which is up here. I did this in the standard way that we discount to the present value. We take the cash flow in the future, 1050, and we multiply it by E raised, which is the, exp the same as the exponential function in Excel, of negative the rate times the time. So in this case here, I've got negative the spot rate of 5% and the term is 3 years. So by multiplying by E raised to negative the rate times time, which we could also divide by E raised to the rate times time, I have converted the future cash flow of 1050 to a present value of the cash flow of $903. See how this is just the present value of the future cash flow. Well, bond three has three cash flows, so that's three present values of the cash flows. If I sum the present value of all of my cash flows, I get what should be the price of the bond. In this case, $998.40. Okay, so now I'll move down to the calculation of the key rate duration. And first, just recall because the concept similar to regular duration here for regular duration duration is an approximation it gives us a sensitivity of the price change of the bond to change in yield so if we shock or change the yield by one percent that's delta yield here and multiply that by duration we're gonna get an estimate of the percentage change in the bonds price well, key rate duration is similar except that instead of shocking or changing the entire term structure or yield curve, remember that's the key thing about traditional duration. It assumes a parallel shift in the yield curve, meaning it's assuming all of the spot rates are change shifting. Well, instead of that, a key rate duration is interested really in what's the chain impact on the price change of the bond only if we change a key rate. For example, if we only change this 5% spot rate at three years and we leave the other rates alone. See the difference? Traditional duration assumes, say, for example, a 1% shift in the entire yield curve. Key rate duration is going to assume a 1% shift in only this key rate at three years. And so the formula is based again on a first order partial derivative. Duration as a linear approximation is a first order partial derivative. And what we're, without going into the der, 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 uh, derivation here, 
we're getting the change in price of the bond given a small change not in the entire yield curve but only for the key rate I'll move it up here again we can just to keep this concrete assume that's the key rate at three years or this five percent spot rate so what's the change in the price of the bond given a small change in just that key rate at three years well it's given by this formula here which is the formula for the key rate duration so if I go again to my bond three at the third year cash flow what I've calculated in the cell which is 2.716 is the key rate duration and if I open that up what I've got here is the F10 is the cash flow which is going to be the 1050 that's the par of a thousand plus the coupon of 50 so 1050 multiplied by my time that's three years so that's my numerator divide by e raised to the rate which here happens to be five percent multiplied by my time again which is three years that quantity is right here and then I divide by the price or multiply by one by the price so this formula here is executed in this formula here and you can see it's a function again of the cash flow and the time and also the price of the bond and my answer is 2.716 meaning that's my key rate duration and just to illustrate what that means to us is here's the price of my bond $998 now my key rate duration of 2.7 tells me if I shock that three year key rate by one percent then my bond price should change by about 2.7 percent so to show that here I'm just gonna I submit I pasted the value of 998 so this is a cemented value here's my price of the bond before I shock the rate and now I'm gonna go over and see this five percent that's the key rate at three years I'm going to shock it down, change it to 4%, and see here's the difference. I didn't do a parallel shift in the whole curve. I just shocked the key rate. And now my bond price is goes up to 1025 That's an increase of $27 and change over the price before in percentage ter terms. The price of my bond just went up by 2.7% approximately, which is pretty close to my key rate duration, and that's what it means. It told me if I shocked just the key rate, the price of my bond change should be about 2.76%, and that's what happened. And finally, so we've got a key rate duration for at the three-year key rate, we can I've calculated all the other key rates such that if I look at bond three here and I add up the key rate duration at the one year key rate, the two year key rate, and the three year key rate, if I add them up, I'm going to get the traditional duration because the traditional duration assumes all of the key rates shift by 1%. So that's the math of the key rate duration. And next, I look forward to sharing you the key rate shift technique as illustrated by Bruce Tuckman. This is David Harbour, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.